Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Racket Sugar Rush. There are two versions of the game. There's Sweet Tooth and Candy Coated. The game plays between two to five players, or if you put both decks together, it can play up to 10. It's for ages uh, six and up, and plays about 30 to 60 minutes. And in the game Racket, you are attempting to racketeer candy. You're going to be gathering a certain number of cards into your hand, and throughout the game, which is gonna be played simultaneously with all players, you will be trading cards. You're going to trade cards to get cards. You're going to get certain cards with different sets in order to call out Racket, throwing down your cards, exclaiming that you've got all the cards with the set that you need and winning the game. However, there are a couple unique little twists like the dentist card and the candy jar, and the game plays similar to games like Pit. We'll go into how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. The setup for the game Racket is very simple. The first thing that you do is based on the number of players, you will gather a number of sets of candy cards and put them into a deck. So with a five player game, you will have five sets of candies in the deck. You're also going to add one candy jar and one dentist card. After that, you will deal out the entire deck's worth of cards going clockwise until all players have cards in their hand. Then the game is ready to begin. The main portion of the game is called the racket, and that's pretty simply how it works. You're basically going to have a number of cards in your hand, and you are going to be trading those cards with other players, one, two, three, or four, and you'll call that out, and you'll say, I want to trade two cards with another player, and any player can accept that trade. They'll say, okay, I'll trade two cards with you, and if multiple players have the same number of cards they're asking to trade, those players can decide who among them they wish to trade with. You must always trade a one for a one, a two for a two, a three for a three, and so on, but when you trade, you must always trade the exact number of exact cards. So for instance, if I wanted to trade two cards, I have to make sure that there are two twos or two threes or two fours. I can't trade a two and a three together. So you're always trading like number of cards. And the way you start is you're trying to figure out what cards you have the most of in your hand and what cards you're most likely to get to form a set. And a set is typically eight cards in a candy jar or nine cards in total of the same type. And when you're trading, you're always trying to get the exact card number that you're looking for. Anytime you can also, of course, trade those cards for a different number if you think you have have more chance of getting that card but overall you're trying to stick with one specific type of candy now the candies vary in value and the higher value is going to give you higher candy points as well as of course the candy jar is a wild so if you end the game and you have one of these candy jars you're going to need one less card of your type because this is considered a wild it's going to give you a bonus of 20 points however if you end the game and you do not have the candy jar and somebody else does, they will lose points for having this card in their hand. Another thing to note too is the dentist card. The dentist card is a negative card. And even if you have the set of cards you need in your hand, but you also have this dentist card, then that means you're not going to be able to place your cards down. You have to get rid of this card in order for you to complete your set. Now, of course, these cards are a, these cards are like extra cards in the set, so most likely one or two players are going to have additional cards other than the base cards they start with, in which case you're always going to be watching out to make sure that you can get rid of those cards that you do not need in order to win the game. And, like I said, once you have all the cards that you need of the exact set, so for instance, if my hand looked like this, that means I would win. I would throw down these cards, I would score points based on the candy value, and then we'd progress to the next round by shuffling up all the cards, dealing out all the cards in the deck and then rinsing and repeating with the racket going ahead and starting. I want to trade two of these for your two or who wants to trade for three? I need to trade one card. Always making sure that you're getting rid of cards you don't need to keep cards you do need so that you get the set that you want. And once you reach the total number of points for the game to end, that is going to be it for you and hopefully you're the winner. So Racket is basically like the game of Pit, where you're going to have a certain number value of like hay, and I can't remember exactly all the different types of cards, but it's the same formula for trading. What makes this game a little bit more unique is the ability to add additional sets of cards for more players to play, and of course, the dentist and candy jar. The ability to not allow you to instantly drop down a Racket, even though you have one, and yes, you'll have more cards in your hand most likely when you got this guy, but it's not going to guarantee that you're able to drop sets down. And then the candy jar is a bonus. It's kind of a way to add a wild to your sets, but the problem is if you have this card and you know that you're not going to win because you don't have the number of cards you need, which is eight in a candy jar or nine total, you have to make sure this isn't in your hand because if it is, you're going to lose points with it. So both of these cards can be bad and this one here can be good potentially if you have the close, like you're really close to winning and getting rid of this card is kind of like a decision you want to make near the end of the game because it's so useful throughout the game. This game is a fun, 
family game that involves trading and utilizing your wits with other players, deciding what players have what types of numbers based on what they'd previously traded you, or what players have uh, the candy jar, which you might want, or of course the dentist card, which you do not want. Most times you're not going to want this card, and at the end of the game, if somebody's trying to get rid of one card, it might be a thing you not, might not want if you do not think you're going to win the racket. Or of course, if players are always constantly trying to trade, maybe they've got this dentist card they do not want to keep because they cannot win the game with it in their hand. Choosing between a larger value of candy points and a lower value might also be a way for you to achieve victory. It's not always winning the race at the highest amount that matters, but maybe in the middle or even at the very bottom because those are the cards that people are going to typically try and get rid of in order to keep the cards that they need that is going to give them more beneficial points because in the basic game mode, you're going to be playing, I believe, up to 25 points, which is, I think, the most relaxed version of the game. But there's, of course, a higher value to the game. You can play, like, higher values if you want. And when you add additional players, that will increase the amount of numbers that you can present in the game as well. Sevens, eights, nines, tens, as opposed to one through five. And you can kind of mix and match how you want. It has a little bit of a custom ability as to what kind of cards you want to pop out. That being said, this game is very simple. It's very straightforward. To take a number of decks equal to the number of players, shuffle them together, deal out the cards, and then begin. You start trading with each other based on the sets, get the set you need in your hand, and drop it down, score those points, check to see about the dentist and candy, candy jar, and then move on to the next round and continue. Very, very straightforward. Uh, this game is a ton of fun. I, I love games like this. I've played a, quite a few different versions of games like this, and um, I like the idea that you have the cute the little different types of candy cards. Now, of course, going to the dentist is not bad. It is usually pretty good. But I guess when you're in the sugar racket, you're trying to make sure that people are eating candy and, I guess, not going to the dentist. I mean, you should be able to go to the dentist if you want to and eat candy at the same time. But regardless, it has a cute little theme there. And I think this is very family friendly for a lot of kids. Uh, if you've never played a game like Pit, this is one I would easily jump on. I don't even know where you can get Pit. I guess you can find it somewhere. But this one here is going to be just like that, but with some added interesting bonuses and benefits that you can have when you're playing the game. It's quick, it's fun, it's easy, and it's very family friendly. This is something that I'll keep on my shelf because there's a ton of times in which I want to play a game that requires 10 players, that I don't want to be social deduction, that I don't want to take a long time, and that I don't want to eliminate any players with, and this does exactly that. So if you're interested in a game like this, Racket, Sweet Tooth, or of course the, uh, the other expansion, you can go ahead and take a look at those down below. Link in the description currently on Kickstarter. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Racket. If you're looking for our copy. Like I said, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and check out our, our link on the, our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Every Wednesday and Sunday, we stream on Twitch, and it's attached to the other platforms, usually Facebook and YouTube. You can also go ahead and check out more videos here on our site by liking, commenting, and uh, subscribing. If you subscribe, we greatly appreciate it. Hitting that bell notification button is a little bit of an extra bonus, so you can see more games on Kickstarter. The more indie-style Kickstarter games, you're going to see here. We're going to try and produce that so you guys can see unique games that you might not have seen if you didn't see these type of videos. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to keeping my sweet tooth with you next time.